Each winter, a small team of specialist avalanche forecasters begin their vigil to keep people safe while travelling on the Milford Road. The Alpine Highway to Milford Sound is home to the country's only public road avalanche programme. Our reporter Tess Brunton and cameraman Nathan McKinnon travelled into the avalanche zone to find out more. The Milford Highway is the only road access to one of the country's most iconic destinations. But high above the road is a hidden risk only visible from the skies. Waka Kotahi's Milford Road Alliance manager Kevin Thompson says most are unaware avalanches are so active in Fiordland. Many people who, who will visit on a fine sunny day that might be uh, in, in spring or, or autumn uh, and, and they're wondering why we're cons- you know, restricting the road or it's closed. There's no snow on the road but snow for us is not always on the road. The snow for us is up in the avalanche zones which you can't see from the main road. Um, so it's a hazard that people can't see. Unless they know it's there, they, they don't really understand the hazard. The Avalanche program is a team of five to six people who monitor and manage a roughly 15 kilometre stretch of road in the Avalanche zone. Alpine supervisor Scott Redwood is in charge of the program's operations and says technicians need to have 15 to 20 winters experience to get the job. Their aim is to keep people safe and the road open as much as possible during avalanche season. We had a limited weather window before the wind picked up and darkened clouds reached the Milford Road, using it to fly to Mount Bell Weather Station, perched 1,600 metres in the mountering towering over the operations centre. Most importantly, it's right near the Homer Saddle and Tunnel. It measures and records data, including temperatures, wind speed and direction, with a mounted camera so forecasters can get a view of the snowpack. Walking around in minus six degrees with wind chill and dark clouds slowly moving in, Scott says the weather stations in the area are critical to forecasting, as on-the-ground access can be impossible. You can log in anywhere, turn it around, zoom in, zoom out get a bit of a feel for what's going on in the area. We have certain things within our start zones that we um, um, zoom in and look at, um, snow poles and and just generally we're watching the snowpack because it's it's not like a ski field, you can get your feet in the snow every day. A lot of times you can't fly here in a heli, the weather doesn't let you, so it becomes a remote forecasting operation. It's a long day for forecasters who start about 6am and can be on until 7 or 8 at night to provide two avalanche forecasts for the day. They also continually monitor the conditions and the data provided by weather stations around the area. Without these, uh, we'd be dead in the water. We'd be um, guessing and it's not, a, it's not a very good game to guess in. You've got to, be, you've got to have good hard data and, you've got to, and it's got to be reliable. Taking off, large cliffs loom over the road, but the source of avalanches is set back into the mountainside. From the top of Mount Christina, the highest zone to impact the road, avalanches drop up to 1.6 kilometres. Scott Redwood says most others plunge at least a kilometre to reach road level. Everything that we do is kind of out of sight of the road that we manage, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a big big burly place up high here and it's, it's um yeah it's the average tourist going through or what is it would just be totally unaware of what goes on to keep this road um functional basically um takes a pretty big team of people and smart people too to make it all happen they use a range of different methods to manage and control avalanches from the more passive no stopping signs to keep vehicles moving through avalanche zones or road closures to controlled explosives Oh, heavy. Yep. Uh, bird and bob's away. More than two tonnes of explosives are used each season, using helicopters to fly into the higher alpine reaches to throw the three kilogram bags onto the hillside, triggering a domino effect as the avalanche builds. We reduce the mess, uh, reducing the hazard. We get it on the valley floor where it can't hurt anyone, and then we clean up and get it open and and people have got some white stuff to take photos of normally. Fjordland weather can be very unforgiving on a bad day, with the potential for isolated thunderstorms to sit in the U-shaped valleys. Kevin Thompson says it can be challenging to get a weather window to prevent excess snow from building in the avalanche zone, especially when a series of storms come through. Closing the road or, or changing the conditions of the road we never do lightly. 
So we, we know the decisions we make affect road users, park users, um, the businesses in and around Milford Sound and Tiano, so that's not only tourism, that's commercial fishing. So when we make a call, uh, we make it with all of that in mind, but safety drives that, safety of our team and safety for the public. Mr Thompson says communication, teamwork, including working with Met Service and helicopter companies, and trust is key in the high pressure environment. He says it's been their responsibility to keep people safe since the program started in the 1980s. Uh, and prior to the avalanche program, uh, people had lost their lives uh, in, in major avalanches, uh, even during the construction of the tunnel. But since the program has been operating, there's been no fatalities, and our job is to keep it that way. While most of the avalanche risk is out of sight and out of mind, forecasters are prepared for a busy winter that can extend into November. On the Milford Road for Checkpoint, Cortes Brunton, Tane.